Hi, TechBridge Nation. How are y'all feeling? <laughs> whoop, whoop. It was a wonderful morning and afternoon. Thank you for having me this afternoon. I did bring a little something with me. And we're going to talk a lot about this guy here. So take a moment of reflection on this banana. And in the next 20 minutes, we are going to go bananas. And I'm going to talk to you about student engagement and how it can be a differentiator and disrupt higher education. So you may be wondering, why did I travel two hours from Reading, Pennsylvania with this rotten banana? And I'm asking you a question. What does this banana have in common with higher education? They're both ripe, yes, overly ripe to be exact. So overly ripe, if we pull back the peel, there's so much there to discover, right? So let's dive in. For centuries, higher education has been exactly the same. You can see here Berkeley, 1898, and Berkeley in 2018. Do you see any real significant difference here? PowerPoint? Anything else? Co Thank you, Don. Yes, color. And I would argue if you zoom in, in 2018, we had a lot more athleisure wear in the classroom. But otherwise, there has not been much change, my friends. So that brings us here. There are articles in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal. There are podcasts with devastating titles. I brought one to read aloud to you today. Higher education is ripe for disruption, devastation, doom. As educators, we don't want to read that. There's also titles like, Will Higher Education Die? And The Death of the Higher Education Model. I also decided to ask ChatGPT what's influencing this disruption. And we can agree with what we see on the screen today. And if you're in this room, you're experiencing this landscape. I can say that one thing that's changed between 1898 and 2018 is the fact that we realize there's a need for disruption. So awareness is here, and that's critical, and we're having these conversations. One other thing that's changed is in 1898, higher education was a lot more attractive, both as an educator and also as a student and a learner. It is not as attractive today. And unfortunately, it looks like this rotten banana. So what are we doing about it as thought leaders? Hopefully something. I'd like to say that at the Opaque Institute for Economic Development and Entrepreneurship, we are making banana bread out of our rotten banana. And that's what I'm going to tell you about for the next hopefully 10 speed minutes of time. So here are the key ingredients to making this banana bread. It starts with an institute of higher education that is ready to innovate. For us, it also included a college town strategy. Then we added a little bit of flair, the Opaque Institute for Economic Development and Entrepreneurship. And finally, Dr. Rodney Ridley, a visionary leader. And when you put all of this together and start with a little bit of love, you get disruption. So let me introduce you to Alvernia University. Alvernia is a small private institution, a, Fran a Franciscan university in Berks County, Reading, Pennsylvania. Our enrollment is around 2,500 2, students, and we have four campuses, four community-based campuses to be exact. And we launched our College Town Strategy in 2020, where we purchased a 260,000-foot building on Penn Street, which is our main street in the city of Reading. And that's what we call College Town. All of that was done through visionary leadership, specifically the visionary leadership of John Loyak and Rodney Ridley, and also our senior leadership team. So what's a college town? This is a buzzword that we hear often, but to us, we've identified four key indicators to make up a college town. The first is a facility, and a facility in the proper location. 
Next, partnership and collaboration, a word that we've used throughout the conference today. Partnership is critical for us. In our case, I was thinking when I was in the room behind me, it's almost like we broke down this wall through the College Town strategy. We have the private, private sector and institutes of higher education working together with a seamless flow. And that's truly what makes up a college town. Also, market-driven academic programming is key. And then finally, an economic development center. And for us, that's the Opaque Institute for Economic Development and Entrepreneurship. And look at all those happy, smiling faces as we cut our ribbon. That energy is still with us today. So you can see here on the left, this is the 260,000 square foot building that we purchased in the city of Reading. It was an eyesore. It's very beige. And we renovated it into a hub for innovation where students can live, learn, and thrive. And in our new College Town facility, we have our College of STEAM. We also have our Heater School of Business and our College of Communications, Business, and Leadership. And we also have our John and Karen Arnold School of Nursing. It's a significant change for the city of Reading, for Berks County, and a model that could be replicated on a national scale. So what is the Opaque Institute? The Opaque Institute serves as a catalyst for economic development and also really the engine behind student experiential learning. I'm going to ask Brianna, Caitlin, Sarah Heckman, who's over here, and Max Horn to please rise for one moment. Then I won't bother you again for the rest of the presentation. This is the power behind the Opaque Institute. Our OPIC fellows are some of the best and brightest students that we have at the university. They come to us from diverse areas of study, biology, accounting, engineering, business, marketing, communications, the list goes on and on and on. I'll have Sarah, Bree, and Kate sit down now. Max, continue to rise. We also have a new recruitment model, which Max oversees that activity as a full-time staff member for us. And it's revenue generating. So talking about disrupting higher education, how do we make money in a new and innovative way? Well, we do that through student recruitment for our specific, specific department. So instead of recruiting for a football team or the basketball team, Max is out, boots on the ground, recruiting some of the best and brightest students for our high performing OPIC Fellows program. Thanks, Max. And just one more, one more thing about Max. He was also a TechBridge business plan competitor. And in addition to that, he not, he's not from Berks County or Pennsylvania. And post-graduation decided to stay here in the Commonwealth. And that's another reason why the Opaque Fellows Program is so special. We're retaining talent in the Commonwealth. So this is what the student-powered approach looks like. All of our students in the program work with between three to five clients in an academic semester. They work 10 to 20 hours per week and we compensate them for that time. They receive over 40 hours of training in their field. And if we look back at the conference today and earlier presentations, we're teaching them those unique human skills that really matter in addition to the technical skills that they're learning in the classroom. And if I had an hour and a half, I would walk you through all of the services that the Opaque Institute offers. But I'm just going to focus on a, a few key critical items that I think are more relevant to this conversation about real disruption. So we have a Spark Business Incubator, both at our 401 Penn Street facility in Reading and also in Pottsville. I have a list of services if anyone wants to come see me afterwards. But in summary, because we're on a time crunch, I'll just alert you that we provide service to businesses in core areas of business. So marketing, communications, finance, business planning, technology transfer. We've worked with over 250 businesses in the last three years of time. We have a Q4 service and our services are in demand. That's because entrepreneurship is alive and well, TechBridge Nation, and you know this, it's alive and well here in northeastern Pennsylvania, but it's also alive and well in eastern Pennsylvania. Most uniquely to us, we have a financial services lens, so we're able to provide direct support and invest in the companies in our portfolio. I know that Rodney mentioned that as his takeaway. It's important that we're investing in these early stage companies 
In addition, it's important that we invest in our small businesses. So we have a fund that we call FLIC, our Financial Lending Innovation Collaborative, where we're able to give up to $5,000 to nonprofits and small businesses so they can really grow their operations. Next, we have our Tech Transfer Office. Through our tech transfer office, we're able to commercialize that really critical intellectual property. I know there was a beautiful comment in the audience this morning stating that if we don't get our research out to the public and onto the market, we could have a cure for cancer and we will never see it in society. That's what Caitlin Long does within the tech transfer office. We also bring really cool innovations like Trilax, a lacrosse training tool, to life. And then finally, community engagement. As I mentioned, partnerships are absolutely critical to what we do. And we developed a unit called the Cultural Coalition, which is a volunteer-based group of community leaders who are really pushing this mission forward. And we're focusing on things like neighborhood revitalization, 0% vacancy on our Penn Street, art and culture, and also education and workforce development. And the beauty of this is that it's fully led by our community members and leaders. Okay, so whew, we went through a lot. There's a lot of ingredients, right? Now it's time to bake it up. So you bake all of that at 350 degrees for three full years of time. You have to wait a little bit, and then you get this beautiful outcome. So in the last three years of time, we've disrupted the higher education model by serving over 250 businesses in Berks County, the city of Reading, and on a national scale. We serve nonprofit organizations, small businesses, and also established firms. In addition to that, we've invested over $60,000 in small businesses through our Flick Fund. And we've also invested over $165,000 in pre-revenue venture investment ready companies. In addition, we've had over 70 students in our program. And as I mentioned, the majority of those students are living and continuing to thrive in the Commonwealth. And that's a stat that we are extremely proud of. We also had Marissa Bishop in the audience today. She represents Ben Franklin Technology Partners. She graduated from our program with her MBA last May or December. One of those. And was recruited by Ben Franklin, originally from New Jersey, is now living here in Bethlehem or Easton. And that's the true magic of the Opaque Institute. And then we invested over $3.9 million into our College Town Initiative for infrastru infrastructure and beyond. So I hope you're hungry now, and specifically hungry for disruption in higher education. I want to make sure we have time for questions, so now the floor is yours. So how do you, like, what do you find is the best way to get buy-in I love that question. It's definitely a lot of us doing this. Yes, we need to build a college town. That's the first step is our team is highly energized. Rodney, our fearless leader, made sure that that was the case. But we do a lot of selling on behalf of the program, but through impact. So that's the first thing is energy. The second is developing those really critical, powerful partnerships, especially with industry leaders. Because of the partnerships we were developed, that we developed, College Town worked. And if we didn't have those partnerships, I wouldn't be up here talking about disruption. Does that answer your question? So energy and partnerships. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about your fellows programs and how you're running that? Absolutely. If, I wish we did have an hour and a half together because I could talk about the Opaque Fellows Program all day. But the Opaque Fellows Program was designed by Rodney for experiential learning opportunities. We did not expect for it to grow to this scale. We started with about, well we started with one student and then grew that to 12 students year one. And next year we'll have eight, well this fall, we'll have 80 students in our program. So there's been significant growth. We find that our high performers are looking for an outlet like this. If they are high school recruits and they, they may not want to be a college athlete or have another opportunity or a cohort that they can belong to in a college setting, they may not decide to go to college or they may take another route. So we find that this high performer network is a really excellent outlet for them. And as I mentioned, it's really the, the brain gain approach for our community that we find to be the greatest outcome. 
and the experiential learning that they receive. Because they work with three to five businesses per academic semester, if we recruit a freshman, by the time they graduate, they could have worked with over 20 businesses. And to give you context about the structure, they work on a three-month service agreement with these businesses, so there's a, a, a really a critical outcome for each individual project. Does that answer your question? And there's no formal accreditation. I know you, you mentioned that. This is a program that functions within the university. Of course, we're attached to our Heater School of Business and the School of Engineering and all the colleges that our, our students are coming from, but there's no other accreditation. Michelle, I get the sense that there's camaraderie in your cohort. Can you speak to that? Oh, yeah. Well, we had, I don't know, Don, if you were in the room when I had some of our students stand, but in terms of energy and collaboration, this group truly does make magic happen. And I don't say that lightly. When we talk about the power behind Opaque, our students truly are a powerful force that pushes this program forward. And it's because they really care. They care about the businesses that they're working with. They care about their community. And we're empowering them to be a really active citizen and leader. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of collaboration and energy within this group.